Leslie Bross let one rip here the other day. <laughs> Hajime! Holy moly, there's a lot to talk about this week. I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet so this doesn't end up to be a 40 minute long video. Let's try a chronological order for a change. Monday, I did a tread workout thinking, hey, if I can get two treadmill workouts in this week, I'm going to be running faster and feeling better. I did the treadmill workout. It was like 40 reps of 6 seconds to, I think some of them were at 18 seconds. <clears throat> and I would say a good two thirds of them, I had these rubber bands tied to my legs. Um, making it even harder for me and the incline was at 15 degrees or 30 degrees gradient and the speeds were out anywhere up to uh, 10 miles an hour to 16 miles an hour. What didn't come into my head was that it would be so hard I couldn't even take up a jump on Tuesday for practice. It destroyed me. So I vaulted on Tuesday and it went terrible. I think I did four jumps and here they are. Here's all four jumps. They were not pretty. I didn't get anything accomplished. So I was a little, I was a little mad. I was not happy that that happened. I took a step back and I looked at it like, all right, I can't be upset if I learn something from this day. And so what I learned is I can't do a really hard treadmill workout and then expect to vault the very next day. All the anger kind of went away really, really quick as long as I realized that, hey, don't be an idiot and don't do a two hour treadmill workout with bands tied to your ankles the day before you vault. Hey, don't be an idiot. This is one bad vault day. It was my first bad vault day of the year. I learned something from it instead of being angry at it. Hey, don't be an idiot. Wednesday I did uh, weights, still really heavy, and some rehab. I don't talk about this much, but I do just as much amount of rehab as I do training. I do shoulder rehab twice a week, hamstring rehab twice a week stretch my glutes, stretch, I do one total body stretch every week, then before and after every practice, I do a mobility routine to loosen me up so I don't get hurt, because number one on my list of stuff to do is not get hurt, and then vault higher, and to vault higher, I need to not be hurt. I think it's important that people know I'm not just doing stuff to lift heavy and run really fast and vault. That's not all I do. I, half of it is that, and about the other half is rehab stuff for my shoulders, shins, hamstrings, anything that's ever given me any issues over the years, I tackle it. I pay special attention to it and take care of it now so I don't have to later. Because I don't want to hurt. Thursday, I did another treadmill workout. This one went way better. I didn't have all these crazy bands tied to my feet. I did one at 17 miles per hour, one at 18, two at 20. They told me I was supposed to have a flat surface, but I had it at like three degrees incline, and it still felt pretty good. So after uh, Thursday's tread workout, I was excited again to vault this weekend because I was feeling good and not so flat anymore. So my pre-meet consisted of uh, weighted squats with chains on them, explosive stuff. It was short and sweet, did a really long stretch after, after I started drinking a ton of water, and was ready to go. The meet went really well. Uh, I warmed up well. I just asked him to throw a bar up here in my warm ups. Cleared the bar a bunch of times, like really ugly jumps up top. And I thought it was at like 16 or 16.6 or something. And they were telling me it was at 5.20. And I was like, really? I'm making 5.20 feel like it's 16 feet or 16.6? This is going to be a pretty good day. Waited about two hours until I came in. I came in at 5.20 again. Cleared 5.20 in my first jump. And then we moved up poles right away so I'd have three cracks if I needed it to get used to it. Which was the big pull I needed last meet. First jump at 535, 17, 6, half. I, I didn't swing it up. It was just it just felt big. It was in my head a little bit. And the second jump I just was like, what am I afraid of this pull for? I'm going to hit it as hard as I can hit it super hard. Cleared 535 on my second.
that was probably, it felt like the best jump I had all day. It felt really, really good. Huge hip height on it. 550, 18-1, and had two really, really good shots at it. It was close again. It was just crazy. It was a super good meet. After the meet, I, I had kind of this bar set in my head that I thought I could make. Now I just kind of threw that away and up the ante a little bit. And these spirits, they're starting to work really well for me. So I don't know if I had a carbon in my hand, they'd work the same. I think they would. Um, but man, right now I have these spirits in my hands and they're working great. So I'm, I'm really liking them. Made my jumps at 18-1 look way better than I did last week. So I'm really excited to keep jumping. I was like, I need to get to the pool. Sunday morning, right after the meet. <coughs> I always feel like crap right after a meet. It's a lot of energy and a lot of intensity. And I'm tired. And I'm eating my breakfast in the car while I drive. While I'm vlogging. I could die. That's pretty dangerous. <laughs> I am running late. And I feel bad. But I'm off to the pool to make myself better. And the pool never hurts, so I just shiver a lot. I hate just straight up oatmeal. Off to the pool, so I can jump way higher than what I've been jumping. Because it's a technical thing I believe that's gonna make me jump higher. Not a speed or power thing, because I am moving down the runway. And Steve and Caroline's kids were there again, and I couldn't. <laughs> they were the, they're the funniest kids I've ever seen. All they wanted to be like, is that the water camera? And then one of them grabbed it right away and just chucked it in the pool. <laughs> so, so uh, thank God it was the water camera and I had the waterproof casing on it or else I would have a $300 paperweight right now. The little one, he's always running around and when he gets excited he goes like this. I, I could just watch him do that all day. I laugh every time. Someone with an underwater pole vault, they'd come up and he'd just... It was really funny. And I uh, got a lot of stuff done in the pool. Finally figured out what my cue is. If I kick my right over my left, which I've been focusing on first, it doesn't work nearly as good as when I wash my right hand. When I wash my right hand, it keeps everything lined up. And I just kind of pop out of the water. and. It worked so well today. It felt easy and I'm pumped I can do that in the pool now. It took a couple months, but I got it. So I'm really excited to see if I can do that pole vault. You gotta say it now. Do it. Say good luck, Sean. I'm good luck, Sean. I'm hooting for you. <laughs> so this makes me feel kind of stupid. I forgot my shoes in the car. So I wore my dad's. And he's wearing mine. The best part is, is my dad used to make fun of me in high school. Like, why are you wearing skateboard shoes? What do you think you are, a skateboarder? And then <laughs> I made him wear them the whole meet. Hey, what are you doing? You killed your brother? <laughs> I had two hours to kill before. Three hours to kill. I drove up to see Carrie, drove down to see Carrie. Down to see Carrie. And she's like, we're gonna have a fantastic day. We're gonna pay it forward. And I guess a couple weeks ago, someone uh, paid for her drink at Starbucks and just said pay it forward on her cup. And ever since then, she's been itching to pay it forward. We were going to pay for somebody's gas. It looked like we were gonna scope out and find someone who really needed it. We need to keep it anonymous and so, We drew an owl at the bottom of it, kind of like our calling card. You ready to pay it forward? We went to a gas station, we sat in the front door scoping people out, trying to find a good person or family that we were going to help pay for their gas. Lo and behold, at the gas station, everyone who came had a Lexus, a Hummer, or some like crazy sports car. 
We're not gonna pay for somebody who has a sports car. They don't need any help with their gas. We were kind of creeps, and the gas station attendants were getting kind of like, What are these guys doing? What are they doing? Why are they in front? They're scaring our customers. So we explained to them what we were doing. And as we were explaining this, um, little old oriental lady, I don't know where she's from, I have no idea. I'm not even going to try and guess. Because I'm going to sound racist or something. She looked like she could use some help. I don't know, we just had a good feeling about it. Yeah, so we gave him the note. I didn't want to watch because I was nervous. I didn't want her to know it was us, so we left. S sat in the car, we're like, we'll just watch her walk back to her car. The gas tenant guy comes out about ten minutes later and goes, You guys. She doesn't speak a lick of English, and she's trying to pay for her gas anyways. And then when we said, no, you pay it forward, she's like, I am trying to pay. I am trying to pay. You're not letting me pay. <laughs> so, so, um, I don't know if she's going to pay it forward, because she doesn't even know what happened. But <laughs> we felt good that we did a good deed, and it made it an even better story that she didn't even understand what happened. Felt good about that, but at the same time, it failed miserably. So we're going to try and do this every week. So if you guys have any ideas of how we can pay it forward to people, we'll try and video it and maybe make it at the end of these vlogs if we can. Like always, please subscribe. Share these with everybody. I don't know. So, yeah. Alright, I'll let you know how next week goes. See ya. Leslie Bross let one rip here the other day. <laughs>